I'm Dr. Maud Nerman, and I'm an osteopathic physician. For over 39 years, I have been treating patients with respiratory and immune problems successfully. I have found the osteopathic techniques that address these issues are incredibly powerful and profound. During the 1918 flu pandemic, when people were desperately ill, patients under the care of osteopathic physicians had a dramatically lower mortality rate. In part, this was because the manual medicine techniques that they used dramatically improved breathing and immune function. In this video, I'm going to describe three techniques that you can do at home to help strengthen your family's immune function and breathing ability. That way, they can be in the best possible shape if COVID should attack. These techniques are by no means a cure. Remember that the best treatment is always prevention. Wear your masks, socially distance, wash your hands, and certainly calling your healthcare practitioner if you develop symptoms. First, I'm gonna show you a rib raising technique that helps free up the ribs so that people can breathe better if they're having some trouble breathing, like with asthma or congestion. You don't wanna necessarily do it when they're contagious because you will put yourself at risk. If you have the luxury of a massage table, that's great, but if not, you can have them on a bed. If at the foot of the bed, there's no board, or else you can put them on a very sturdy dining room table with some kind of padding, a mattress pad, or some blankets to protect the practitioner's hands. So I have you raise your hands and then link them on my body. I reach around so my fingers are at the very bottom of their rib cage. I put my fingers to the side of the spinous processes and as I pull my fingers away, I lean back which helps lift up their arms and further helps raise their ribs. And as I pull back my hands, I, I'm pulling her along with me and I slowly move up area by area. And as I move up, I lean back, lean back and pull, lean back and pull, lean back and pull, lean back and pull. I would recommend doing this approximately three times. And you will find that people usually breathe a little better afterwards. So this is a very good prophylactic technique. Next time I'm gonna show you a lymphatic pump. The lymphatic system is our main cleaning system from viruses, bacteria, and toxins. And we don't pay enough attention to it. It has two thirds of the fluid in our body. So osteopathic manual medicine has worked out a number of powerful techniques to help the lymphatic system, but it also matters that you drink enough water. So once again, I have the person lie down on their bed, treatment table, or dining room table, and I gently approach them. I turn their head to the side, whatever is comfortable for them, I don't force it. I put my palms right underneath the clavicles, the collarbones, move my fingers toward the midline, so I stay away from as much as possible from the breasts on women. And I gently push in a slow and rhythmic fashion. I don't want to push too hard. This is not CPR. You're not trying to get the ribs to move so much that you break them. Especially if it's older people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s, they, their ribs can be pretty fragile, so be gentle. But you should see just a little bit of teeny wiggle in their feet. That shows you you've done quite enough. And you do this for about a minute. And it's amazing how it opens the airways as well as helps the lymphatics move because ultimately the lymphatics travel up the body and they end up inside the heart. And you do this for about a minute or two. Tell me, does that feel better for your breathing? Oh, it's great. So this is a lymphatic pump that patients can do themselves. So if you happen to ever be stuck in the hospital, usually there's a board at their feet and they just push their feet gently and rhythmically against the bedboard. They can tell if they're doing it right because their head should wiggle a little bit. The motion should go all the way through their body into their head and neck. And you can do the lymphatic pump five or six times a day for a minute or two and that will really help your immune system flush out your antibody antigen complexes, help your immune system, help pump your lymphatics. So I highly recommend people who are sick do this frequently. So this is another technique that helps free up the ribs and powers the lymphatic system to travel up the body and get into the heart. So once again, I slide my hands, this time both hands, 
along the lower part of her ribs. Let me show you on her spine where I place my hands. So I'm going to raise her shirt a little bit. And these are the knobs I talk about. So this is the spinous processes of the spinal column. Here are where the rib heads meet the spinal column and they tend to be jammed. So I curl my fingers slightly to give some release to the muscles themselves. And I lean back and pull slightly away and up. The area I'm working on is right here. It's just lateral, just closer to me than the little bumps on the spine we call the spinous processes. And I lean back a little bit and pull. And this helps free up the ribs that may be jammed against the spine. And the ribs tend to really love this because a lot of people after car accidents or blows to the chest or just sometimes a lot of daily living leading forward, working on the computer or driving. Once I feel it ease up, I move up just a little bit and do the same thing. I let my, the pressure of my fingertips help relax the muscles there that tie the ribs against the spine, and then I also lean back a little bit. Once I get up a little higher here, you can help yourself by taking their arm, raising it over their head, then putting it under your own arm and leaning back, both with the hand under their body and leaning back with their arm. Of course, if they have shoulder problems or pain, you should not be doing this. You just would do a two-handed approach underneath their torso. I'm pulling a little bit with the arm, and that's also helping to create some distraction between the ribs and the spine and open up the rib cage's ability to breathe more fully. Then I go up another level, curl my fingers a little bit, as much as you can whenever you're doing any of these techniques, use your body and not just your hands or your arms. This one takes a little more practice than the other one. So you usually feel after you've done this for a little bit that the muscles also along the spine relax. And clearly I would do it on both sides. For additional help with breathing, this is a pretty well known one. It's similar to one that Dr. Andrew Wild teaches. It's important to do this in any position that's comfortable for you can be done sitting, lying, or standing. So I recommend you breathe in for a count of about four in your nose. You hold it for a count of two. Then you breathe out for a count of six. Hold for a count of two. In for four. Hold for two out for six, hold for two. As this gets easier, you could breathe out for eight and hold for two. You wanna make sure you breathe out for longer than you breathe in. And if you can't breathe in and out through your nose, you breathe in and out through your mouth. Please remember that the more you optimize your health, the more likely you are to have a positive outcome should you contract COVID. Thank you very much for watching this video.